Welcome to the channel, I'm Sam the Ashen. Enshrouded is a new open world game with a good bit of survival mixed in, with a really nice wide variety of crafting, some customizable base building, and lucky for us it has a pretty sweet glider and a nice snappy grappling hook on top of that. One key aspect that a game like this has to get right is exploration. Right off the bat, Enshrouded rewards you for exploring, which is crucial for keeping the player wanting to explore more. The environments are really good looking, and a lot of the time there is a sense of awe that makes the world seem massive while driving you to find out what's out there. You'll quickly be able to tell the areas feel dense and handcrafted, and the little details are all over if you keep an eye out for them. You might already be able to feel what's coming next. If you can't, I probably just suck at editing. Atmosphere. So many games would be on an entire other level of quality if they put more work and focus into building and fostering an atmosphere that the player can easily connect to. And Shrouded does an awesome job at this and most people will be able to be immersed into the atmosphere within minutes of starting the game. There is another major factor that connects with the exploration and atmosphere, which is combat. Combat feels responsive, which is important because you don't want to feel like you're smacking a pillow or a brick wall, and there's a good middle ground on which Enshrouded stands on. The combat is tense and challenging, but accessible enough for the majority of people. You drop some of your backpack when you die, but you can always just go back and get it, and the game does a good job with giving you checkpoints. There are several ways to approach the combat, and unlocking new abilities can bring a lot of fun. When I unlocked the Jump Smash, I definitely had a blast totally overusing it. There is a posture system, and the gauge on enemies fills up when you parry or hit them while blocking, which lets you do a critical hit. The game actually gives you useful items from enemies along with XP, which pushes you to engage in more encounters. Like I mentioned before, there are several ways that you can approach the combat, like sneaking up on an enemy for a backstab, or noticing some explosive barrels and waiting for an enemy to walk by them. Freedom of movement comes into play here as well, and is mixed into the combat encounters. There's a pretty big skill tree, and I'm sure that more will be added, allowing for different builds that really change how you fight. Enemy variety is pretty solid so far, and within each type of group of enemies, there are subtypes that use different weapons and abilities that mix things up. Once you get back home from exploring, you're going to have to do some crafting and building to really progress. Really quick, it has buttons for sorting and quick stacking, which is an awesome quality of life choice. It's pretty easy to make your place nice and cozy, which is helped by the NPCs that you can go out and rescue in order to unlock new recipes and crafting stations to add some life to your home. The crafting and building is pretty extensive. You can craft anything from dishes to a toilet to a throne and with different styles for all of them and you unlock more as you go. I'm usually not super into the details of designing my base in a game like this, but I felt some extra motivation to get into it thanks to the atmosphere, the customization, and the benefits that the game gives you for going the extra mile like the well-rested bonus. As for the actual building of the game, there is a ton of options to put your own spin on things like building a cozy wood cabin or a stone hut or building your way up to a castle or a fortress. It's really up to you. There is a ton of beautiful and convenient locations to make your base and you're not limited to just one. I'm already up to four as my limit. There's also the whole Zelda inspired puzzles that are in the game and I've had a ton of fun with these so far. So with all these factors mixed together, like the exploration and the rewards for going out of your way to explore more, and the incredible atmosphere that wraps around the whole game and builds tension in different areas, the giant size of the map with a ton of dense places to explore and the incentive to do so, they really have gone above and beyond developing a rewarding and engaging experience for anybody willing to pay the $30 price tag. This isn't even getting into the multiplayer part of the game, which I haven't had the time to get into, but I've heard some really interesting things for both PvE co-op and some open world long-term PvP. There is definitely a recipe for greatness here. The combat is satisfying and enjoyable. There's some good bosses that help with the pacing and progression of the game, along with clearing up the enshrouded parts of the map, which by the way, it is a dangerous miscovered place that you can only stay in for a limited time until you destroy the shroud core along with the area boss. So what we have here is a deep and cozy open world survival game with an amazing atmosphere, some NPCs to help you along, 
some Zelda-esque dungeons and puzzles to unlock special gear, a giant map just begging to be explored, and much, much more. I appreciate you watching the video. If you want to see more from me, you could always subscribe. I post once a week on Sunday, so I will never clog up your feed. Leaving a like or a comment truly does help me out a lot. Every person matters. Have a good one. Peace out.